So welcome to this lecture on agents and message passing concurrency. This lecture is in Peter Faroy's course, edX course on programming paradigms. And my name is Saif Haridi. I'm a co-author with Peter and also collaborator in research. And I'm going to give the lecture on concurrent agents. So, so this lecture about concurrent activities, how to organize software as a set of concurrent agents communicating by sending messages to each other. We will take the declarative model that Peter described, in particular the concurrent declarative model, and extend it a little bit to be able to model concurrent activities. This model is used in a number of languages as the main paradigm, in particular languages like Erlang and the Akka sublanguage of Scala. So let us start. As we know, the world is concurrent and many programs that are working for real are concurrent programs. They execute multiple activities and they run simultaneously. And the idea is that you have concurrent entities that interact by sending and receiving messages. And actually, most of the software you use is concurrent. The operating system consists of concurrent processes and thread. They interact with the user. They perform I.O. operation. And there are many services there that are service the resources of your machine. The web browser is a concurrent process that communicate with a web server. The email client and the email server is other type of concurrent processes. Virtually everything is concurrent. The internet, the routers, the gateways, the servers, the user machines are concurrent activities that communicate with each other. The services in the data centers are also concurrent processes that serve user requests. A typical example is um, a search engine. There are two typical architecture for concurrent program. One is called uh, client-server architecture. And in this architecture, a server provides some service, so it receives messages, it replies to messages, and it accepts basically requests from clients and respond to these requests. Typical things are mail server or a web server. And clients know the address of the server and use the service by sending message to that address. The address over the internet, you can think of it as a URL, but URL is basically just goes to a name server which gets you the real address, which is some kind of network address. And clients and servers run concurrently. They might fail independent of each other. Another architecture is peer-to-peer -peer architecture, where you organize your software as a set of agents. These agents both work as clients and servers, and they communicate together with, uh, by sending messages to each other. There is no notion of hierarchy between these. These are peers at, that's why the word peer is actually used. They serve other peers and also request services from other peers. We'll call all these um, entities, client, server, and peer. We call them agents or actors. There are two languages that rely heavily on this type of paradigm. One is Erlang. Erlang is used in telecommunication and also in building a lot of the cloud services that you see right now. And Scala. Scala has a notion uh, of agents called actor, and there is a paradigm around it in a framework called ACA. So look to this. What are the common features of this agent-oriented systems? So agents have identity. This is a very important thing. So agents have identity. Once you know the identity, 
you can send messages to these agents. They receive messages, we put them in a mailbox, and they once they receive messages, they also process this message, perform some action that is depending on these messages, and then send the replies, if any, to the clients. So, a reply of messages, it's a predetermined return address, basically. So how we are going to cast this in programming language model, and in particular in the Mozart system, the OS Mozart system. Okay. So we have a notion of a message that will be a data structure. It could be a record. But in fact, a message could be any entity in, in OS. Like, for example, it could be a procedure that you send. You have the notion, the notion of address on the other hand, does not exist in our model until now. So we will introduce just a new simple concept called port. And port is basically a named stream. And the name is the address of that stream. And then you have the mailbox, which is the messages that arrive. And they arrive in order. So they arrive in an incremental list. So it is a stream of messages. Then processes or actors or agents, they can reply to messages, and they do reply in either by having with a message a data flow, single assignment variable that they bind and give the answer back, or they, you have in the message some no notion of address, again, it would be a port of the client.